Hi everyone, welcome to our show, Real Talk with a Unicorn. Here we discuss real life with magic people. My name is Tatiana, I'm a professional recruiter in supply chain and logistics, and I'm very excited to introduce my today's guest, a good friend of mine, Andrea DeSaint. Andrea is a successful business and life coach with over 20 years of leadership and coaching experience in Canadian corporate world. Andrea, welcome to the show. Thank you for making it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so grateful that you're having me on. It's going to be actually a great way to sort of have a great conversation about a lot of really interesting topics that I think a lot of people will benefit from. So Excellent. And, and uh, since we are in these unprecedented times, I really want to focus on how to stay mentally fit during this COVID-19 pandemic situation because... Uh, I have my own questions uh, and I know what my audience may be interested in. So the first question that I have is, um, what, how would you describe the common set of mind these days? What do you hear from your clients, from your friends? So currently there's a lot of unrest, a lot of uncertainty, and I think all of us are facing the same uncertainty. But once you actually, at, Everybody who I've spoken to recently, clients, including friends, family, uh, they have concerns about, you know, financially, what's going to happen to us? Are we going to continue to have a job, for example? That's a major one that keeps coming up. Um, what is going to change in our society economically? What's going to happen? But what we always need to bring it back to is to have faith and to have actual courage to come back to center, to realize that there are certain things that are within our control and those ones we definitely can work with, but the ones that are currently out of our control, those ones we, can, we need to sort of minimize and leave to the side and really focus on actually bringing, empowering ourselves because that's the most important thing. So... so so what I'm hearing is basically fear and anxiety. Or yes, there's a lot think? of anxiety, a lot of anxiety around uh, the future, a lot of anxiety in terms of um, even, you know, having certain coping mechanisms that are compromised because we're faced with something new. And anytime we're actually facing something new that is unfamiliar, there's a lot of new things that come up. So um, basically, I'm working with people to reassure them that, yes, they do have control over certain things in their situation. And that's what we need to focus on. So the anxiety, as you touched, um, is, is actually quite common right now. And uh, it's also um, having anxiety, for example, for parents. They have yes, issues true. with, exactly. you know, kids missing school, for example. Yes. There's a lot of anxiety around that. How are my children going to cope? Children are extremely resilient. They will pick up exactly where they left off. So that's something that parents should not worry about right now. It's more or less trying to stay calm and collected and really eliminate that anxiety that is unfortunately caused by the media. Yes, I was about uh, you know. to ask you, what feeds, what feeds that fear? What feeds that anxiety? Low quality information or maybe frequent exposure to social yes. media, for example. So absolutely. Um, unfortunately, right now we're being bombarded by all kinds of information that may or may not be accurate in terms of um, what is actually happening out there. So for example, the repeated information that there's so many people dying, there's so much dread happening. It's actually lowering, um, it's creating so much anxiety, creating a lot of mental health issues. So that the best thing to do in this case is to really turn off your TV, Watch, read the news once a day is what I recommend to everyone who I work with. Turn off your TV because your TV is going to be shouting numbers at you. Um, your subconscious retains that negative information and eventually you are pre-programmed with anxiety. 
and that's what needs to be eliminated. You need to refocus, reshift your focus on positive things. So turn off your TV. <laughs> difficult, difficult. I know, Andrew, I just, I want to use this opportunity and I'm not yes. sure it's the right setting. And, um, you know, you, you definitely have certain tools, coping mechanisms, coping strategies for your clients. Is there something that is very easy, everybody can do sort of thing, something that you use yourself that can help our viewers and listeners to reduce the level of anxiety or fear? Yes, absolutely. There are many things. And obviously, everybody responds differently. Uh, and they have different coping mechanisms. But what I would definitely do is start off your day with a three to five minute meditation before you even get out of bed to do some breathing exercises. And I'll, I'll get into that very quickly. But what's important is not to go straight to turn on your TV, turn on your social media, because the first oh, three to five minutes, that's what I do. <laughs> Sorry, three please. to five minutes every day is how it's going to preset your day. So therefore, if mm -hmm. anything is thrown at you that, um, you know, there's more fatality, it's more people lost their lives, um, it it, it, it goes into your subconscious and already as is you're going to start your day in a very negative pattern. So there are many things. Uh, for example, the meditation, as soon as you get out of bed, just close your eyes, continue to close your eyes three to five minutes, just breathe, mm -hmm. focus on your breathing. Then from there, you would get up and you would basically have a structured day, no different than you would when you're basically going into the office. Um, but you also dressing up, taking shower, having absolutely, breakfast. absolutely maintaining that routine to still sort of have some normalcy. But on top of that, if going for a walk is therapeutic, take that walk first thing in the morning or make sure you schedule it during your work day to go for a walk or a run. And I know you're quite a bit of an athlete. Yes, and you, yes, you, you I like know. I, right? Air is the main ingredient to my personal well-being. So yes, yes. It's important. Uh, you know, as silly as it sounds, go outside and hug a tree. I am serious. It's actually a grounding exercise. Whenever you feel anxiety, trees emit positive energy from the ground. Perfect. And that itself, literally, I mean, when they make fun of tree huggers, there's a, you know, there's science behind it that proves that basically that also optimizes your health. It, you know, being in nature is extremely important. Um, as well as, you know, Putting a routine in, in terms of, uh, for example, if your children, you know, you would schedule breaks with your children and you would tell them, guys, you know, between this time and this time, I have, you know, these calls, but afterwards I promise I'll get to what we need to do together yeah. and you're assisting. So involve your family in this routine. Uh, yeah. Do it together yeah. as a team. Make, so, them, uh, make them feel important and part of the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's extremely important. So there are many things. So breath work is another one that I really wanted to mention. It's a very quick way. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is, I tell all my clients to do this, to learn, to actually inhale for five seconds, hold for five seconds and uh, exhale for five seconds. So five, 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 uh -huh. repeated times four, because that actually signals the brain to calm down. So you're already starting off in a very calm way. Turn off your social media, turn off the actual alerts on your social yes, media as well. Because alerts, <laughs> they keep, they won't allow you to relax. That's right. If something is important is happening somewhere. And Exactly. That adds. Exactly. And, and it's, it's so important. I mean, multitasking. Yes, we need to do it. But unfortunately, the distraction can throw you right off and your concentrations off. And it's so important to always come back to center and just do one thing at a time and to be able to focus on that well and then move on to the next item. The thing is, we need to also understand I want to also bring in a point that when you're a leader, a boss, 
it's also extremely important to understand and to be a little bit more lenient with your team because when you're actually working from home um there's a lot of things i mean it's a di different dynamic it's shifting exactly. a little bit I, I right put me to my next question because it literally goes right after that uh, i wanted to hear your thoughts around the yes our work from home reality because on average we have at least three roles that we are fulfilling throughout the day sometimes excessively multitasking and having that yes to remain a good parent caring and loving spouse um high performing employee a good daughter or a good son is it even possible to manage all those functions should we expect ourselves to perform at our best these days what are your thoughts about the multi yes yes absolutely and that's a great question so uh to start uh, what i also want to mention is that it's extremely important as leaders or managers to not micromanage during this time of working from home and I'll explain why uh, and this is speaking from experience 24 years in corporate I've been through every situation possible um, you know I've also been exposed to this type of scenario where we had teams working from home for two weeks at a time and the most important thing is to empower your employees to make sure that you don't micromanage because once everybody gets back to the office it's actually going to uh, create a very uncomfortable situation if as a manager you don't empower you don't give a little bit of leeway you don't work with your employees so that being said to tie it into what you said about uh, basically having juggling all three roles yes so the pressure of that so we need to understand that when we work from home we work as a team with our family our family becomes our team essentially so every member in the family is team. So it's about teamwork. It's about working with your spouse and actually understanding that if they require a little bit more attention because they don't have the office coworkers that basically provide that regular support, be the person who listens to your spouse. Just be there to listen. You may not need to yeah, offer make your spouse listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's just understanding that the needs change a little bit because of the environment. The environment is changing. So your kids are part of that team dynamic now. So include your children, work around it, talk to them, explain to them what you're doing and how they're also contributing to your success during your work day. For example, with your spouse, make sure that you take a half an hour every day and just to have a conversation and if you need to cut off work at five or six o'clock because your family needs you you also need to find that discipline to basically be efficient during the work hours just because you're working from home it doesn't mean that you should be working till midnight neglecting your family so it's about finding balance in everything, getting your family to work as a team together. And there's a lot of ways of doing that, but it's really having and, and not being as uh, a perfectionist, for example. Yeah. Lowering, lowering the expectations of yes. your spouse and maybe even setting boundaries that haven't been discussed prior to this yes. situation, right? So it's, it, it all comes down to conversation, to communication, which is essential to any team. Absolutely. So and you are having two teams right now during the work hours. Yes, yes. And your coworkers. And flexibility is key. Flexibility is key because nothing is going to go according to plan. We have to be able to accept the fact that unfortunately right now we have to play it by ear. It's reinventing the wheel. It's, it's, you know, having that flexibility and not being disappointed if not everything goes according to plan and not actually taking it out on your family. If something yes, happened during the day to sort of go back into center and sort of before, let's say something went wrong, a deal uh, didn't go down with a customer. Um, there was a complaint from a, a client or whatever it may be before you actually tie it off and close your work day to take two or three minutes take a breath let it go make your list for the next day 
and close off your workday and then shift over to your family. Don't take in your frustration into your family time because unfortunately you're stuck with your family in the house. You're, you yeah. cannot unload. There has to be other ways to be able to externalize the frustration, of course, talking about it, but there has to be a right time and a right place to do it so that it doesn't frustrate the family or create an uncomfortable situation for the family. So that has to be kept in mind as well. Andrew, and also uh, to those managers who may not be realizing that they are micromanaging others, because the role of a leader these days is basically being present with the yes. team, not necessarily doing the work with them. So right. when the team is not around, there is a stress that the manager can experience that I'm not required, I'm not that important, I'm losing touch, I'm losing control. How does he or she know that they're micromanaging their team. Can you give me an example of micromanaging? Sure, absolutely. So for example, if you're not empowering your team, so you have a project or there's a certain uh, you know, task list that has to be achieved. Once you provide the guidelines, your job as a leader is to empower and to empathize and to understand what your team is going through have a check-in but have a friendly chat and and actually have open dialogue and be open to active listening because it's not up to us as leaders to impose it's up to us to develop to be able to get people to open up and to actually be able to even come up with um suggestions for process improvements for example but one of the ways is once you provide all of the resources all of the tools to your team mm -hmm. you should be able to trust your team for them to go off and actually do what they're supposed to do it's not about sitting on the computer and monitoring and micromanaging and monitoring if people are oh they're idle now what are they doing or for example yeah. on on messenger monitoring i mean i've had coworkers who were sitting i mean they're not working they're actually just monitoring what people oh they're idle for two minutes so if you have if you don't have trust in your team mm -hmm. there's a disconnect there and that's the first signal if you feel mm -hmm. that you cannot trust your team it's because we also have to go back to ourselves as leaders and determine that i provide clear guidelines for them to do the task mm -hmm. that i provide the resources for them to do the task and if they're taking another three minutes to go to the washroom or get a coffee break, no different than at the office, we're not going to penalize people because most people actually will work extra. Now that they're not driving for two hours a day, they will often utilize that time to actually put in more work. So I think it's a matter of recognizing efforts on a daily basis, sending a thank you note, recognizing, appreciating what your workers are doing for you. There's not enough awareness about that. In, in leadership, there needs to be more self-awareness and awareness in terms of, are we recognizing our team members more? Because if you really trust your team, they will outperform. They oh, wow. will really outperform. They will really go above and beyond. All the teams that I have worked with have been fantastic. Why? Because I've established the relationship of trust with them. It has to do with, you know your task, you're accountable, you're responsible, mm -hmm. you're equipped with everything you need. I am here to support. Basically, a leadership role is a support role. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of leaders and managers misunderstand the role. It's basically, you're there for the team. And that's what you need to focus on. You need to focus on developing them, supporting them, and allowing them to have a voice. If you're working from home, it's okay as a leader to check in with them and to say, hey, how's your day going? You know, how's everything? I'm not judging you. I just want to be there for you. Let me be there for you. And that's how you develop a relationship. That's the best time to actually practice empathetic leadership. Absolutely. For leaders, honestly, I think these days are a gift because you can yes. develop 
stronger bond with your employees based on exactly understanding or it can be a disaster if you if you micromanage or if you try to control people that's exactly what um, it's it's going to create a lot of animosity and resistance and when you don't trust people. I mean, you hired them for a reason. You hired them to do a job. So it's a matter of trusting them to do that job. Obviously, it's extremely important to stay connected. Staying connected, I mean, you know, the way we're talking right now, once a day to do a quick check-in with the team and just have a laugh, share a joke, do something to lift their spirits up. I see myself as a cheerleader. As a leader, it's my job to cheer lead. So if you don't cheer lead, how are they supposed to take your example? They're going, to, you're leading by example. Exactly. So you may have even, you know, birthday <laughs> party celebration. There are a lot of yes. people going around, maybe having a Zoom conference to celebrate right. birthday. Going creative about team building events is is essential to. Of to course, people. absolutely. And it brings me to the uh, to the next point. Um, I wanted to discuss that with you because I couldn't find anything that would satisfy my curiosity. In the yes. Day. Um, we've been taught over the years that a hero is someone who is out there fighting, um, struggling, starving, and here we are staying at home with plenty of food, with our family members, being entertained 24-7, having entertainment on our fingertips. What would you tell those who don't feel that they're making a difference by staying at home? I would actually tell them that uh, they, they need to go internally a little bit more and understand um, it's when you're in a certain environment and you're conditioned to having everything and being in this type of situation is actually completely foreign because if somebody's not used to this, so for example, uh, just to take it back to me, I grew up in so many different environments all over the world, exposed to so many different things. I've seen things that I should have never seen in my life. I've seen terrible things. Mm -hmm. But it makes you realize that our little world, there's so much more outside that little world. And we're blessed and having the gratitude every day right. to actually see how much we, we have and how much we're affecting others. If we're not following the guidelines, mm -hmm. we're truly affecting other people right now. So we need to follow whatever we're being guided to do right now, mm -hmm. but at the same time to basically have that gratitude of what we have exactly. and understanding that other people are not in the position that we are. Other people, there's other people out there, If you know, you go downtown, you will see that in contrast, there's a lot of people who are struggling on the streets. There's so much devastation that, you know, we do have, all of us have the ability to help with. But right now with the conditions of COVID and everything, it's extremely important to just um, go internally and try to work on yourself internally versus, you know, worrying about what's going on externally so to your point we have everything we need in the house yes it's exactly. not like we you know it's having that awareness that this is the time to improve the relationship with your child this is the time to get closer to your spouse this is the gift we're given to actually work on all those things we wanted to work when we were busy running around yeah, driving around everywhere, driving right? Around and escaping those emotions and feelings that we are now forced to deal with. Exactly. And I you are a life coach. I personally never had a life coach in my life, and I'm sure that if I had a life coach, some of my lessons would go easier <laughs> on me. Yes. And do you have um, a typical guideline like let's say someone is at home reflecting and facing those fears and anxiety yes where should they start and what is the typical self-discovery process How yeah absolutely it's uh it's extremely important you start off by always taking some time for yourself and being 
honest with yourself about your feelings about everything because we're we're amazing at pretending that certain things don't bother us we bury emotions um you know it's 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 a coping mechanism it's how everybody copes we all have something that we be in denial right for a while absolutely absolutely so the first thing would be is to absolutely admit and be honest with yourself. This is really bothering me. I have anxiety about this. I need to, I don't know why I'm always feeling anxious. So it's identifying and being honest with yourself. That would be the starting point, honesty with yourself. Um, you don't have to pretend with yourself, although we're very good at pretending with ourselves as well. We put on masks with ourselves as well, so we have to work through the layers. But it's just being honest with ourselves. This is what I'm going through. So the second step would be identifying what is within our control. Making a list of, you know, this is the problem. Then identifying what is in my control and actually making a list and writing it down because our brain actually processes things better when we write things down. And between the honesty and actually writing things down, we have a little bit more clarity. And then step number three would be to actually tackle whatever is within our control, maybe working towards one goal a day, um, if it's feasible, or a little bit of, of a portion of that goal to actually bring it to fruition. So for example, um, I'm anxious about, uh, you know, maybe I'm not happy with the job I have and I don't like my job anymore or what, I'm just using a random example. Or I'm afraid that I'm gonna lose it, for example. Yes, or I'm afraid I'm going to lose it. So being honest about that, then determining. These are the skills that I have. These are the jobs that are out there. Now, action plan. Maybe I should update my resume. Maybe I should actually take some more courses. Let me see what the government is offering in terms of free courses that could help me develop new skills. Um, is there a book or an online class that I could do while I'm off because uh, we're working from home? Maybe I have an hour a day to dedicate to an online course to actually put myself back in control so that I can reach the goal of perhaps I want a promotion or um, I want to switch jobs altogether or whatever it may be. And this is just a random example, but it's going from being honest with yourself about the anxiety, making a list of what is within your control. And the third step is actually starting to work day by day on achieving that goal and so so action plan gives you the yes control and being able to compare yourself today with yourself yesterday so some yes progress that you can celebrate and be proud of yourself i actually find that intuitively that is my coping mechanism that's great that's amazing <laughs> so that's, um, and of course if having action plan it can go both ways personal development and professional development so yes absolutely look at but the most important process. core thing is to be honest with yourself about what you're feeling that's a big and that <laughs> it sounds easy but it is not <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, and and also i noticed this um correlation between what i consume during the day and how i feel for example, I can eat something and then feel super guilty about it. I wouldn't call my diet as extremely healthy diet. So yes. is there any magic food that helps us cope with stress, with fear that boosts our immune, our mental health, and maybe food we should limit or... Right, right. Well, I mean, that's at the core of everything we do, our diet, uh, basically energetically. I mean, it's, it's fuel for the body. So it's a matter of identifying. Obviously, everybody um, has a different uh, metabolism, a different system. Mm -hmm. But overall, the guidelines are that high sugar... Um, items, high carbs, high sugars, 
um, are basically not that great for us because I mean, mind you, that doesn't mean you need to deprive yourself. If you need to have a little bit to have sort of that comfort food, don't deprive yourself. And if you do have something sugary, the worst thing you can do is afterwards give yourself guilt because it actually starts uh, certain chemical processes in the body that makes it 10 times worse than you ever had it. You would have gained 100 <laughs> grams and if you are guilty about it, here you go, here's your kilo, right? Is that it's, it's, <laughs> it affects you in very, uh, very negatively. So what you need to do is to just, again, just tell yourself, that's fine. I had something sugary. It's mm -hmm. fine. I needed it. Um, have some green tea afterwards, for example, for those people who are not, um, you know, don't have issues with green tea, I would highly recommend green tea because it's actually such a great overall detox um, for, for everything. So, but what you need to do is you need to establish whether for your particular metabolism and body, do you... Is it better for you to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner? It's, it's, they always recommend that you should be um, have your meals at the same time every day mm -hmm. um, to be able to actually, your body gets used to that. And it's extremely important for the body as well to get the nutrients. But also what they're recommending now, obviously, because we don't get out of the house, vitamin D, oh. vitamin C, and uh, vitamin A, extremely important especially now that we're, we're not moving about and uh, you know it's extremely important vitamin to also a, a vitamin a what would be the vegetable fruit that has that vitamin um i have to go back and check i know i take I supplements carrots. i think it's carrots i think you're right yes the carrot noise yes Mm -hmm. So I would need to go back and check the list of those ones. But I know I take a liquid multivitamin and oh. the whatever, if I don't miss, but also an alkaline diet. It's extremely important. I don't know if anybody has heard of that. Um, there's a list of alkaline foods that are extremely important because during times of stress, um, we actually produce more acid. So it's extremely important to do that. Have a bit of lemon juice in your water. That actually... Um, creates alkalinity in your system. So that's extremely important as well. It's great detox for the liver, for everything. So it's, it's a matter of, you know, whatever your diet was before, it's yes. clean eating. At the end of the day, it's just clean eating. You know what is actually good or bad for you. I and do, I do. I, I don't think uh, you convinced me enough to give up my toast with strawberry cream. <laughs> no. I probably keep that one, but I'm yes. so guilty about it. <laughs> so, so the Tim bits every day oh. is is one. Uh, you you know that that's a difficult one because of course when you get Tim bits at the office all the time, uh -huh. it becomes a habit. But that's something that. Um, is not necessarily a great thing. And, you know, this is the time to actually reassess what is good for me, what is bad for me. And it's different for everybody, but overall, it's just clean eating. And what that means is eliminating anything that is high sugar. Um, certain fats we need in our system, we can't eliminate all fats. Obviously, it has to be low fats, not fried foods all the time, having Food fresh, fats, uh, healthy yes. fats that um, in avocado, for example. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's, that's extremely beneficial. So it's just a matter of determining and also not giving yourself guilt. If you do have something. That's very important because I hear a lot of guilt from my friends and girlfriends yes. who eat cake and then feel guilty about it. You can tell. Um, yes. So it's extremely important not to give yourself guilt and to just, again, it's the honesty. Yes, I needed it. Yes, that's fine. Next time I won't need to have, you know, a whole uh, donut, for example. I'll just take a little bite or I'll have a Timbit and that'll be it. Yeah. So it's, it's I mean, just... Yeah. Andrew, you know, sometimes we eat sweet food when... Yes. To uh, compensate for the stress, maybe if we add extra routine to our day, let's say working on some hot, mm -hmm. something creative. I found that when I'm 
focusing on creative things, I have less cravings. So that's, that's great. Uh, balance out where you get pleasure from and have yes. healthy ways of getting your absolutely job, right? so absolutely it's extremely important and again don't forget about your hobbies just because you're home it doesn't mean that netflix takes over if you had a passion for yeah. reading before read turn off the news it's extremely important this is the time we're so lucky in a sense that we get that time to be able to do what we wanted to do. And to your point, creativity, crafts, whatever it may be, uh, drawing, singing, whatever, bring it out now. It now it's me from scratch, yes. that's you have never tried before. Yes, yes. It can be as creative as even doing gardening. So absolutely. You can engage, and, and I also found, you mentioned Netflix and other shows. I find that I sleep worse during this time period because I tend to stay up late yes. and tend to watch quite disturbing shows and documentaries that also affects uh, my well-being. So having less sleep affects how you feel throughout the day. So absolutely maintaining that um, regime when you go to bed and how many hours of sleep you have. Um, yes, it's extremely important actually to go to bed by let's say 1130 because same, you're but not the same day you wake up <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is also <clears throat> it's extremely important not to watch anything that's disturbing before you go to sleep because it goes into your subconscious and then regardless everything happens in your subconscious you're going to have really bad dreams um, the next day you might feel off and you don't even know why. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why watching the news, especially with the terrible things that are happening right now, it's, it's subconscious programming. And that's what we need to eliminate as much as possible. So watch something happy before bedtime, something that uplifts you, something that raises your energy, because it's extremely it's important. Laugh, maybe, you know, laughing together with your spouse. Yes, definitely absolutely. Good bonding, so it creates a better relationship. Exactly. Hug your family before you go to sleep. It's extremely <laughs> happy <you> tree, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's amazing, Andrea. I really enjoyed our conversation. And um, I, I mean, I, I have so many insights that I will be implementing literally today already. I want to say thank you for your contribution to this conversation. I hope that a lot of people found support in that. And of course, I know that uh, we just talked about general things. Uh, yes everybody's unique and some people had very severe mental health condition before even pandemic started so guys don't forget reaching out for help it's absolutely normal what we discuss absolutely apply to people with a relatively normal mental condition but if you suffered panic attacks anxiety severe stress prior to these days you may consider consulting online because there are so many services. And I know, Andrea, you do remote one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions. Yes. Take care of your mental health because if you don't do it now, it may definitely be damaging long-term if you ignore that condition. Absolutely. It's extremely important. And don't feel that you don't have a choice. You are empowered. You can reach out. And there's nothing wrong with being vulnerable. That's what we need to understand as human beings. And that's the element of honesty. It's actually bringing out, what do I really feel? It's not what society imposes. It's not what is expected of me, but how do I really feel at the core? And it's okay to, to be in touch with that. Exactly. And also leaving, I, I mentioned it recently in my post, that having your own definition of success um, reassessing what success yes you, what goals you have in your life make sure that if you're working on something that's what truly resonates with your nature with yourself so this is the best way right. to explore your strengths um try different tests and you know learn more about you as a person and yes uh, your future goals and of course take ownership of your success of your career. Andrea, thank you so much. Absolutely. It was a great pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. And, um, 
and to have a lot of questions and uh, I'm always happy to do another conversation. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you.